Meet Mia. Mia works as a small hotel owner renting rooms to people who visit her town, known for its beautiful nature and fresh produce. However, life there is not always easy, as her home is prone to hurricanes and flooding. These natural hazards can greatly damage people's houses, businesses, and resources, and can even push them into a poverty trap. But it doesn't have to be like this. As the frequency and intensity of natural hazards continue to increase, more and more experiences have been made on how to increase resilience to these events with the help of insurance and other risk transfer instruments. To better protect Mia against possible natural hazards, there are five steps: one, risk prevention; two, retention and transfer; three, preparedness; four, response; and five, recovery. These steps are all part of a disaster risk management approach that integrates risk transfer solutions. One, prevention. The first thing that should be done to help prevent serious damage is a risk analysis, which identifies the hazards in a specific area and analyzes how exposed the people, businesses, agricultural fields, and infrastructure are. This analysis will reveal what can be done to prevent damage and feed into the risk transfer instruments and early warning systems in the next phases. In this area of prevention. Mia can strengthen her hotel and home with stronger materials to make them more resistant to wind. Her community can work together to plant trees, build a wall to protect farmland and infrastructure from heavy rain, or clean drainage systems to prevent flooding. The government can implement and enforce land use restrictions to ensure that people don't build in flood-prone areas. Two, retention and transfer. However, even if you put all preventive measures in place. Some residual risk still remains. Some of the impacts from climate hazards can be absorbed through risk retention, while other times it is important to find a risk transfer mechanism. In the retention and transfer phase, it is important to conduct a cost-benefit analysis, based on the risk analysis, to determine whether a type of pre-disaster financing, that is, financing before a hazard strikes, such as insurance, can help. As an individual, Mia can take out a microinsurance policy in case her hotel is damaged. Weather index insurance could be a good option for the farmers in Mia's community, which will pay out when there has been too much or too little rain throughout the year. If Mia and her community do not manage these risks pre-disaster but post-disaster, that is, after a hazard strikes, then they will be forced to rely on friends and families, savings, or additional borrowings. The government can also protect their citizens with pre-disaster financing using contingent debt facilities, which ensure that funding will be available immediately after a hazard hits, and by taking out their own insurance. This money can then be used to provide emergency relief to the people or support reconstruction. If governments plan how to manage the financial consequences of a natural hazard, they will not need to manage ad hoc and rely on donor assistance, additional taxes, budget shifts. Or taking out credit from external actors, implementing different prevention measures will greatly help in reducing the cost of these types of insurance and financial instruments because they significantly reduce the overall risk exposure. Three, preparedness. After Mia and her community protect themselves with pre-disaster financing, they need to prepare themselves for the natural hazards. They can do this by stockpiling food and water in case of an emergency. And making sure that they have a safe place to go should a flood or hurricane come their way, the government can also train individuals in rescue and emergency services, establish early warning systems, and come up with a contingency plan to ensure that everyone knows what to do. Adaptation investments, that is, investments made to help countries adapt to climate change, microcredit, and increasing savings, could also be good options for the government to better prepare. Four response. When a natural hazard hits, Mia, her community, and the government enter the response phase. It is essential to respond quickly to avoid further loss of human life or material damage. They can do this by helping with the search and rescue effort, providing temporary shelter and food, and quickly repairing the most needed infrastructure. The pre-disaster financing will play a big role in making this quick response possible. It may also be necessary to acquire some post-disaster financing by increasing taxes, reallocating national budgets, 
or taking out credit. Without this financing, it can be very difficult for people and the government to get back on their feet. 5. Recovery Now that Mia has responded to the first impacts of the disaster, she can start the recovery process. The good news is that with the right assistance, her savings, and possible payouts from her insurance, she can start to build back better. This can be done by examining the affected areas and repairing things in a smarter way that prevents these damages from happening again. All these steps are linked to each other and are most effective when countries and their governments, communities and individuals work together. When everyone knows what should be done to prepare for a natural hazard, the consequences will be much less severe. Thanks to this disaster risk management approach and integrated risk transfer solutions, like insurance, Mia and her community will be more resilient and can make sure that these natural hazards never turn into disasters.